So do you ever want to know just how to set up a sump on a budget? Well, in this episode, we're going to check it out. Well, this week we're on the road, so that's why there's a change in scenery in the opening. Uh, this week's episode is going to have a little twist to it. We're going to show you how to set up a sump on a budget. And I know that everybody likes to have all the most expensive gadgets and toys. But there is a way to have a pretty effective sump for a nice looking reef tank on a budget that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Also, uh, I want you to pay close attention to the video because at some point during the video and videos um, from here on out, there's going to be little hints maybe to an upcoming episode or a channel that I've looked at uh, that'll be contained in it. If you see it, put it down in the comments and on the next video, uh, the answer will be revealed in the, in the description. So with that being said, let's get to the video and good morning reefers. So now that that's all over with, um, a protein skimmer is basically the heart of any sump. Now a lot of people have budgets that can afford much more expensive ones, but my budget, the SEA 302 was definitely a uh, must have. At 185 gallon capacity, this skimmer has worked relentless 24 seven for me for about almost six years now. And with just proper pump maintenance, it'll work really hard and a price point of $179.99 is well worth it. Now, an auto top-off system is another must-have in anybody's sump. Uh, it makes uh, topping off the evaporated water a very easy job, and you don't have to do it manually. Uh, JBJ, being mine of choice, has performed uh, really well this is my second unit in the six years that i've been in the hobby and you can see here how the lights light and you can manage to with the um, the float switches have a high and a low restriction so it will cut off the, the pump and prevent overfilling the tank it's also the one i use to dose calc with and at its price it'll fit pretty much almost anybody's budget on their tank Now, an area of importance, um, heat is right up there with, with the protein skimmer. If you don't have heat, you your livestock will not stay alive. I use the Finex and the Aquion heaters. I use two heaters and split um, basically the, the workload of the tank across them so that one cannot overheat the tank. Um, you can see I basically show my, my sump the way um, I run it, whether it's dirty or not at the time of filming. This is the way I run it. So these two heaters, especially with a controller, Keep my tank rock solid at 78.1, as you can see here. And plus, the prices on each are not that bad for a budget-minded person. Now, if you're also worried about um, electricity, this return pump is a DC return pump made by JBow. It's a DC S7000. It really handles my tank. I only have the settings up to three on this pump, and it provides more than enough flow for my tank. Uh, plus, it saves on me on energy um, that it doesn't use and fits my budget really well as far as what I had set for my tank. Ah, yes, everybody can use these fancy uh, um, lights to grow macroalgae in their tank. But me, I just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up one of these clamp-on lights with an LED or CFL bulb, and it's good to go. Uh, so um, it's basic, and it's worked for me over the, all the time that I've been in the hobby. Mm -hmm. 
Now, working hand in hand with the light is the macroalgae. I run a mixed bed of, of bubble chlorpa and, and chato. Um, I know people that run chato just fine and, and have no problems with it. Uh, it works in my tank. Again, pricing is it's varied depending on who you get this from. Me personally, I would much rather get it from a friend or a, a, a reef club that you're a member of because that's where the prices you'll, you'll find are the best. Now, uh, basically all the stuff that I've listed in, in this um, you know, short video can be available on Amazon. Um, I'll link all the Amazon links down below. Um, that'll kick you back to uh, my Amazon store. Um, if you purchase something from Amazon through that link, uh, it'll kick back some money to me and help me uh, build the channel and build the, the tank and keep things running. So uh, if not, no big deal. Um, but definitely a budget on any kind of tank um, is not a bad thing. Yes, buy the best you can, but buy the best you can within your means is the way I live it. Um, you can see the results speak for themselves. I keep things to the best that I can afford. And the items that I listed below, especially the SCA uh, 302 skimmer, the pump and the heaters I use, keep the system for me running uh, basically really simple, really clean. And I have never had a complaint about making the choices that I made. So that's basically it for this episode. Um, going back to what I said in the beginning, uh, if you've been paying close attention, there have been some clues in this section of the video that'll come in the update uh, that will probably be coming up soon. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop uh, down below, as well as your answers for what you think the, the hints are hinting at. Um, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications of when my next video comes out. And that's it for me for now. This is Scott, and I'll see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.